One of the most common questions that get asked from patients, and especially adult patients, is how can scoliosis affect my digestive system? And if it is, because they're noticing differences um, in their digestion as they as they go through life. And it happens really three main ways. Uh, number one way it can happen is neurologically. Second way is structurally, and last is with motion and mobility of the spine. You see, scoliosis affects more than just the spine itself and the position. Scoliosis can affect something much greater, and that's something that has to do with the neurology. So to understand a little bit about how scoliosis can affect the digestive system, we have to understand the role between your brain and your spinal cord and your nerves and how that can possibly affect your body. You see, your brain is really the, the, the central computer of your entire body. It sends messages to your body and to the organs, to the systems of your body through something called your spinal cord. And your spinal cord is protected by the spine, just like your brain is protected by your skull. And you can imagine that if the skull bones were to get shifted out of alignment, they start to affect the brain inside, they can affect the way the brain functions. Well, unfortunately, the exact same thing is also true when it comes to your spine. When your spine starts shifting out of alignment like it can with scoliosis, the, that effect could have a negative effect on the spinal cord and neurology. And the spinal cord and neurology can now affect whatever those organs are controlling. We know that one of the most common scoliosis is a lumbar scoliosis, so it's going to affect those lower uh, lower nerves more than it would affect the cervical nerves, let's say. And when you ever do whatever nerves are being affected, whatever organs they're directly controlling, it could have a negative impact on what actually how those things are actually functioning. Okay, so this is something that we call pressure or tension within the nerve system or spinal cord. Chiropractors uh, call this uh, subluxation. That subluxation can have a negative impact on the visceral system of the body by the way it affects the nerves. However, scoliosis, when it moves out of its progressive state, of growth and now starts becoming a compressive condition over time as an adult, it now can share a lot of the subluxation characteristics that we see that can occur with injury and, and the, such force. So therefore, it can start affecting the neurology in this way. So when we look at scoliosis, the first thing you can do becomes being having a lumbar or a lumbar or a thoracolumbar, lumbar, meaning either a low back or, or mid-back uh, scoliosis, it can affect the nerves directly controlling the digestive system. So if you affect a neurology effect that's controlling the digestive system, you can either slow down the way it functions or you can completely alter the way it's functioning so it's not working the way it would be if those nerves were, were not being interfered with. And this is this brain-body connection through the spinal cord that can have a negative effect on the way the digestive system functions. Also, what people don't understand is that when scoliosis starts to compress and it gets bigger and bigger, it actually shortens the distance between of your torso. Now, shortening the distance of your torso actually can start to decrease the space that you have for these organs to work properly in. And as since these organs are actually like our muscles, they're smooth muscle tissue, it has to contract in a certain space to, to move your uh, digestive food products through the entire body, this short distance can actually compress them. And as it compresses them, it can't actually move as, as well. The, the substances can't move as well through the digestive system as it would have if your torso was longer. So this compression of the torso can also be directly related to the way your digestive system functions. And the last thing that we have to understand is something that we talk about rigidity of the spine. We know motion of the spine is related to how well the digestive system moves. So therefore, rigidity in the spinal tissues are going to relate themselves to rigidity within the within the, the, the organs that are surrounding them, meaning the more you can move your spine, the more you can move the, those tissue areas. Well, if the spine reduces its mobility, which we know that happens with scoliosis patients, especially asymmetrically, it can affect the digestive patterns as well. So when we look at these three things, we have to get down to what's causing these digestive dis disorders in reducing this, um, the nerve pressure, in improving length, and improving mobility to see improvement in digestive disorders when we look at scoliosis 
patients. Now, the big thing in managing a scoliosis patient that has digestive disorders is not to deal with just the digestive problems because that tends to be your only kind of treating the symptoms. So what tends to happen with patients is that they're taking laxatives or things to help their digestion, but they find is that these things are always recurring and recurring and they're still worsening over time because they're treating the symptom, they're not getting to the cause. The way you get to the cause is actually to address the size of the curve. Reduce the curve, reduce the curve compressive factors, and then you'll start to see changes or improvement in these issues without the use of medications and laxatives and all these things. In fact, this happened very recently in my clinic is that, in fact, when we have patients that come to our office, this is very common in patients that are post 50 years of age. They're seeing digestive disorders starting to go, start to become much, much less frequent. They're seeing a lot more issues with, you know, with bloating and constipation, and they're not getting di their digestive system to function properly, when we reduce the curve and we improve the mobility of their spine and lengthen their torso, because most patients actually find they're actually taller once they go through their corrective processes, their digestive systems improve. And they improve not because we're just treating the symptoms, but because we're improving the cause, right? Improving the cause. And the way this is done is through a series of something we call rehabilitation therapy exercises and corrective bracing in the scenario they get the most possible change in a scoliosis patient. So if you're kind of wondering whether, hey, you know, I know I have scoliosis and I have digestive issues as well, could those things be related? My answer is yes, more likely they are. And the more you ignore your scoliosis, the more likely you're going to see progression of your digestive disorders, which is going to lead to more frustration. And one thing that we know for sure across the board is that the worse your scoliosis gets, the harder it is to reduce and bring back. So there's no benefit in letting your scoliosis get larger. There's no benefit in letting your digestive dis disorders get worse. The more proactive you are with these issues, getting to the cause, stop treating the symptom, really start restoring the proper nerve supply, really improving the length of your torso and increase the flexibility and mobility of your spine. You're gonna see a direct relationship to those things, how they affect your digestive system. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.